Can I have this? <gasps> right, that you are going on eBay. Get off this. Get off this. You are lucky I have to weave this in. Hello fellow yarn lovers, welcome back to my channel. Okay, today we have the granny heart stitch hexagon cardigan and oh my god, look at this, okay? So this, this has taken a while. So the kids at school that I teach told me that I should apologize because I've not been able to put out a video for a good couple of months because I ripped a disc in my back. Apologies for ripping a disc in my back. I was at the gym, I was trying to be healthy. It was January 2nd. But no, I ripped a disc in my back, so I'm feeling much better now, it's March, it's, it's healing, it's getting there. Anyway, so yes, this cardigan, this fabulous cardigan, which has taken me quite some time to put together. Um, let me just put it on for you. As you'll see, it is pretty fabulous. Let me show you the back with it on. There it is. Okay, looking great. Okay, I have steamed this, I'm going to show you what I do when I'm steaming these. So this tutorial, it's, it's not like as much in depth as my neon cardigan here okay because this once you know how to do the hexagons for this you can follow like the piecing together bits from things like um craft and copper from passionate kelsey because the red stitches on this they don't impact the size so it basically is just a normal hexagon but with the addition of like the little red hearts onto each granny stitch so that's mainly what this is about. However, I am gonna like show you exactly what I do to get it to being this, okay? It's just not like, I don't show you how to make the hearts on the back, okay? But there are tutorials for those and I did film a tutorial for those. And then I realized about like five or six other people have tutorials for those hearts, okay? So, I mean, if you do want to see my version of like these hearts in tutorial form, then like let me know down below i will upload it because i filmed it and then i was like yeah this is so good and then other people did it first so anyway um yeah so i will go into great depths of how you do these stitches i will show me trying it on i will show me like putting it together and building it i'll show you how i extend the bottom um it's pretty much the same kind of method as my tinkerbell cardigan so if you haven't seen my tinkerbell cardigan then go and check that out because i followed the exact same process the only additions were like the hearts into each stitch okay um i will be showing you with this color because like we can all appreciate how difficult it would be to try and like film with black yarn so i'm going to show you how to like make the actual stitch and then i did demonstrate how to extend your cardigan so if you want to extend like the sleeves because i extend the sleeves before i seam it up if you want to extend the length and if you want to extend the back to like meet the two back like pieces up so if you don't want to have like a panel of granny squares or picture or anything um you would use just the exact same extension just to meet the two bits of the back up so that's pretty much the tutorial i'm gonna throw you back into the craft room you can watch enjoy the process um, there will be timestamps down below, so if you like, kind of, you know, just want to see this, then follow this timestamps just to do this stitch. If you want to see it being built or put together, um, or you just want to kind of have a look through the timestamps, then go for it. Um, so without further ado, here's the tutorial. Right, so since black is not the ideal colour to teach you how to do this stitch in, I'm going to use pink in place of black because, you know, pink's a nice colour and it's nice for you to see. I'm going to use the original uh, red that I've used in my cardigan. So this is lipstick, both are by Stylecraft. These are both DK. Um, I think both of these shades are available in the Aran or like the four weight if you wanted to do like a chunkier version of this. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna be teaching you in. Um, as much as I can, I will teach you in these colors. I might have to refer back to the black one just for certain aspects, but I mean, I'll try and get my lighting right so you can at least see what I'm doing. Anyway, let's just push lipstick to one side. Just gonna put this uh, fondant one here and we are going to start with a slip knot on the hook. So you need a nice long tail for this because you do not want your pit to explode. So nice long tail that we will weave around and around the pit once we've done that side. Okay. So I'm going to chain five because I don't want, um, I hate doing magic rings, I just hate them. So a slip knot on your hook, chain one, two, three, oops. come here, four, five okay so we've chained five i'm just going to grab a nice length of yarn to work with here so chain five now let me just set myself back up into this first stitch here you want to just pop your hook and then 
yarn over once I get the hook in there and then yarn over and then just pull through those loops there okay and then immediately you want to chain three so one two three that's your first double crochet okay right these long ass nails are coming in handy because I've got my nail right in the center of where we chained that first um, chain if you can do four you can do five you can magic ring if you want I just hate magic rings to be honest right so into this space here where my nail is poking through I need to do six sets of granny clusters so if you didn't know granny clusters are just three double crochets and then you would put your chain in between them so here's the first double crochet of one of them I'm gonna yarn over into there pull up the loop pull through two pull through two I need one more for this starting side so yarn over through there pull through two pull through two and then you need a corner so one two that's my corner so starting the second side so yarn over go back into the center of that big circle you made pull through two pull through two and we're just going to repeat this so uh, let me just finish this one so pull through two pull through two yarn over into there pull through two pull through two okay so that's two sides i need to chain two between each granny cluster and I want six granny clusters so I'll just yarn over hook in pull that through pull through two pull through two two more of these for the third side okay so that's the third side done okay so I've done three well a chain three two, two double crochet chain two three double crochet chain two three double crochet then a chain two and then we'll make the fourth side so yarn over and then three double crochet into here one two three just kind of like i've just wound this ball up so it's really tight okay so i've done four sides now i need two more so chain two for this corner okay yarn over Cluster number five, first double crochet, second double crochet, third double crochet. Okay, we need one more. Like honestly, at this stage, like double check that you have done six, okay? So I know I've done five. Look, here's one, two, three, four, five. Don't make a pentagon, don't make the mistake of uh, just like going rows and rows with a pentagon because like it's really hard to fix your work and it's so time consuming to frog so for my sixth one I'm just gonna move these over so it can fit in there I need a chain two don't forget to chain two for your corners so there's two chains there so I'm gonna do my last granny cluster so double crochet yarn over double crochet now I'm just gonna finish off this final cluster so yarn over hook in Pull that up, go through two, pull through two, okay, and then chain two for this last corner, don't forget that, and then you're gonna just slip stitch into the top of that original chain three. Let me just, I like to put my hook through two, like that, okay, and then I'm just gonna slip stitch like that, okay. Right, what you need to do once you've slip stitched is you need to get over to this corner. So I'm just going to slip stitch my way over to that corner, like so, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chain three, one, two, three, okay, I might pull this chain three out in a little bit, but I just want to really make sure that this like yarn's not going anywhere. I could use a stitch marker, but like I like to live dangerously, so pull up your loop and then just you know admire your work admire like your first round of this okay so that's where the hook should go back into okay this is just my tail down here that's my working yarn right what you're going to want to do is grab your red so i'm pretty sure i put a slip knot in this earlier i did right so with your red or whatever color you're going to do for your heart okay just get a slip knot put the slip knot onto your hook maybe i should have left the slip knot a bit bigger hang on there, slip knot on your hook okay right what you're going to do first is 
So this is the corner where we are currently at at the moment, okay? Now, this is one of the clusters that I've made. This one will be not too difficult, but we'll tackle that one last, okay? So with this cluster, you've got first double crochet, middle double crochet, third double crochet. And each one of these will get a heart onto each one. Let me just grab the actual like cardigan itself and I'll show you, just two seconds, okay? So, see this is like a granny cluster. Like each granny cluster, you can't really see because it's black, apologies. But each granny cluster like gets a heart on top of it. So that's what we're gonna form. This is why I did my uh, tutorial in pink and not in black because it's impossible to see. So anyway, right, slip knot is on the hook. What you need to do is, so we're gonna go back to working with this in like once we've done this red row. So into here, you want to put, so with the slip knot on your hook like this, put your hook in between the first, hang on, don't get this tangled in, in between the first and the middle granny, uh, the double crochets, sorry, okay? And then keep this working pink yarn on that side, okay? If you're working right-handed like me on that side. Okay, so, and then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna, I'm just gonna set myself up with this. So you're gonna wanna just yarn over with the red, pull it up, okay, and make a single crochet. And that's you attached with this. That should have through there, okay? So you're attached with this now. And what you're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three. And then you go in between the next one and yarn over and make a single crochet, okay? Okay, so first heart is done. Okay, and then all you're gonna do is chain three, because we're gonna jump over to the next granny cluster to put the next heart. There's one, two, three. Okay, so just look, there was my chain two. There was my chain two. This is the second side of the cardigan. Okay, you're not gonna crochet over this end or anything. That's just gonna get woven later. Okay, so what you wanna do is take your hook, go in between the two double crochets, like the first two, and then just single crochet like that okay then we're going to form the heart so we chain three one two three okay and then you want to put your hook in between the middle and last double crochet of that side okay and single crochet like that and then chain three one two three Okay, jump over to your next granny cluster, put your hook in right there in between the two first double crochets, make a single crochet, chain three to form your heart, one, two, three, put your hook in between the middle and the last double crochet on that one, single crochet, then chain three, one, two, three. And that's essentially how you make the hearts. So here's the fourth granny cluster, exactly the same thing. So a single crochet in between the first two double crochets, chain three, okay, and then single crochet in between the middle and the other double crochet, okay, chain three, one, two, three. Let's move on to the fifth cluster. So hook in, single crochet, chain three, okay, hook in between the last two there, single crochet, one, two, three, okay. Now this one, this is our chain two and then this is our cluster where we'd originally done our chain three to start this row. Just pull them apart and just go in between the first chain three and the middle double crochet. Make your single crochet, chain three, one, two, three. Okay, then go in between the middle and the third double crochet, or the second one technically of that one. Okay, make a single crochet and then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. Okay, and then just keep this. Hang on. What we need to do is make sure that we have this in the right place because we're not snipping our yarn. I'm not weaving in a million ends. That, that's just like far too annoying. So just grab your pink yarn and what you're going to do, just this is my tail from the middle, so just push that down that side. So here, that's my working pink yarn. This is the where I'm gonna stick my hook back into, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it to the front and hold it there. 
and I'm going to slip stitch into the start of this red right there okay so just into the bottom or anywhere that looks like okay you're just gonna slip stitch in so I like to go under two of the little V stitches there and you're just gonna slip stitch like that okay and then what I would do is I would just chain two just one two pull up a big loop unless you want to put a stitch marker in but I'm just living dangerously okay and then with your pink yarn bring your pink yarn back up like this stick your hook in get your hook on and get your slip knot back on nice and tight like this okay so just keep your red yarn just to the side there keep it out of the way okay right since you're already in a corner here this is where we'll start so you've just got a chain three here for the like this granny cluster now for the second row of pink every single um, corner space is going to get three double crochet chain two three double crochet and then we'll just jump over into each corner space so you're going to have 12 clusters for this round okay so to start that off you've already chained three so you just want to yarn over go into the corner space make two more double crochets like that okay you need to chain two and then yarn over and make another granny cluster so three double crochets there's one two three okay and then just keep your red yarn just keep it in the back you just ignore it for now until we get we finish this pink round okay you're just going to work the pink and the red or whatever colors you're doing in alternate ways okay right so just finding my next corner okay so look this this here will be a little heart okay this was a cluster so this is a corner so we're going to work into this corner here grab your yarn Okay, I'm just going to stick my nail through so I know where I'm putting my hook. Yarn over, hook in. We need three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. Oops, there's two, three. Okay, so there's my first granny cluster. I need a chain two for a corner. Yarn over. One and I'm just struggling with this yarn it's wound up so tight let me just release some for me to use for this round there we go okay where was I I need one more double crochet here so yarn over through two through two okay so this this is our little heart on this one so that is the next corner I'm just going to yarn over go straight into the next corner and make three double crochet chain two then three double crochet so there's one two three chain two okay and then oops and then one two three okay I can see that's my next chain space so again yarn over one two three chain two and then three more double crochets one two three okay next corner yarn over three double crochet chain two three double crochet into this chain space so there's three double crochet and my yarn is now stuck on my phone case this style craft yarn is not normally this faffy uh, right so that was three double crochet chain two and three more double crochet into this chain space one two three okay we're nearly finished so we need to go into this corner space here because this is our little heart so yarn over again three double crochet chain two three double crochet chain two just grab some more yarn for myself okay, chain two and then one 
two, and three. Okay. I don't need to chain two, I just need to slip stitch, slip stitch straight into the top of that chain three. Okay, so I'm just going to find the top of it, that there. I like to go under two strands, I think I pretty much say that every time. So I'll go under two strands just to make sure it's nice and secure. Hang on, didn't quite get it. Can I save it? Yes, there. Okay, right, so I've slip stitched. Okay, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Okay, pull my big loop, living dangerously. Okay, so let's just analyse this. Okay, so you've got a hexagon. We've got uh, our 12 clusters with our chain twos in between like each like set for the corner. And you can see that it's forming these really cute little hearts in there. Okay, so this is the right side of it. And then I'm going to show you as we work this up what happens because we're not going to weave in uh, any ends. I mean, if you want to cut this off at every row, you know, be my guest and create more, more work for yourself if you do it that way. Um, so I'm going to work on the next red row. So I'm going to put my hook back in to the red loop that I pulled up. Okay, so what we need to do, so I've got my hook back in. Okay, so I am going to move it over. I'm going to just put it in here. What I'll do is instead of putting my hook in there right to start off this row you're going to want to put your hook so I'm going to go into you can choose this cluster you can choose this cluster I'm going to choose this cluster so I'm going to put my hook in because whenever you're making these hearts they will just go like in here and in there these single crochets so I'm going to put this here okay I'm going to put the slip knot on my hook there okay and I'm not going to pull it too tight, okay? I think I might need to actually chain another one here. So let me just chain another one like that, okay? And then it's going to reach over. So then pull it through like that, okay? And then you can chain one, okay? If you want to, you can like turn this into a single crochet by going back under and then doing that there, okay? So here, right, we're going to start our next red row. So let's go one, two, three. Okay, and then I'm going to go into those two stitches there in between them, do a single crochet, and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to find this granny cluster. I'm going to go into this space here between the first and the middle, make a single crochet, chain three. One, two, three. Finish this little heart off like that in between there. Single crochet one, two, three, and that's essentially all you do. And you're just going to go into the first gap and the second gap of every single granny cluster, make a single crochet, chain your three to form the heart, okay, and then go into the second gap, the second space like that. Okay, and that's literally all you're going to do. So I'm just going to chain three. One, two, three. Oops, my hook's not coming off it. Three. Okay, jumping over onto this side. Okay, single crochet, chain three. Single crochet, chain three. Single crochet, chain three. Single crochet, chain three. Okay, so that's what you want to do all the way around. Yes, it will look like this, like frilly, but once you do your pink row on top, then it just all you'll see is the little hearts. Okay, so just continue with your single crochet into the first space, chain three, and your single crochet into the second space. Okay, chain three and I will meet you back at the end of this round and I'll show you how to finish this round and start off the next one. Okay, I've just reached where I'll be starting my next round for this but like you can just keep that to the back okay, and just ignore it. Okay, so just continuing with all your clusters. Oops, I hope it keeps popping out. My tension must be a bit tight today. Okay. Just double check that you haven't missed any of these because uh, if you miss them then it, it's a bit of a nightmare to go back and frog and then have to redo rows. 
So every red roll you do, it doesn't actually add any length or height or width or anything onto the cardigan. It just, um, it's just like in between. Okay, right, so I've got two, um, like the last one here. So I just need to chain my three. One, two, three. Okay, and then I'm just gonna slip stitch into the bottom of here, like so. Okay, so I'm just slip stitching in there, like that. Okay, I'm just gonna chain three. One, two, three pull up my loop, loop dangerously, like that, okay? And then I'm gonna find my pink loop, like this. I'm just gonna put my hook back on, okay? These like will kind of cross over, so you can just, you know, move your twisty yarns around just to like untwist it. Um, so for this, just keep the red one at the back there, okay? For my pink one, here, uh, I know I've got the chain three there, but what I want to do, if this happens, you just want to one like pull out those three, put your hook under, and you want to bring this to the front because it needs to cover the red. Okay, so just pull it to the front if it ends up at the back. Okay, and then you want to chain three, one, two, three. Okay, I could have like made my cluster in there. I could have done three, but I'm kind of already there. So I think I'm going to finish this here. Okay, so just be mindful of your corners when you're on this. Okay, so just looking at it, sometimes it's not so easy to see, but like this is not a corner. This is like in the middle of like in between two corner clusters. So I'm just going to chain three. This is usually how I would do um, granny hexagons anyway. I normally have like a chain three then I'll go all the way around and then I'll chain two more into the space and just slip stitch and join it. Um, I mean, if you want, you can slip stitch your way back to the corner every time. It's it's personal preference. This is just how I do this. So for this one, since the pink is back at the front, it's covered this. And I'm going to jump straight into this corner space because this, obviously, it's a corner space. It's got the, the chain two right there. So I'm going to jump into here with a three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So let me just keep the red at the back, okay? So jumping straight in there, yarn over, and then three double crochet into the space. I'm just gonna zoom you out because it's more comfortable for me to have my uh, like my hands there so I can actually see what I'm doing. So three double crochet, got bits of lint everywhere on here today. Chain two, because this is a corner. Yarn over, three double crochet. One, two, three. Okay, and then this is not a corner. This is just like a regular like double crochet that's gonna go in there. So just be mindful. Just see how this is like where. So if I look at the back, you can see where I've continued this one up. So here, I'm actually gonna yarn over and just cover this red here so that it just leaves the little heart. I'll show you what I mean. Let's do a granny cluster in here. And I'll just show you what I mean by carrying it up. Okay, so just put up this loop there. So I've, this here, this is carried up there, but I've kind of like covered it so that just looks like it's purely that little heart there. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. You're going to maybe see in some instances where things are carried or maybe where, like, red might poke out, especially if you're working with two really, like, contrasting colours. But, I mean, you know, this is this is an armpit, okay? Nobody's going to look at your pit and be like, oh, my God, you didn't carry up your yarn properly.
Okay, so getting to like the final granny cluster, I've just done my final corner. So yarn over, we just need two double crochets in here. So there's one, and there's two. Okay, and then you just want to slip stitch into the top of this chain that we did, this chain three. It's sleepy. Just slip stitching into there okay so we're pretty much like in this one and ready to go with our next pink round so just like chain one or chain two or three or whatever you need to do put a stitch marker in and just pull up your long loop for that one okay we're going to resume the hearts okay so I had chained was it two or three and um, I just need enough to be able to get me to like either I can go into this cluster or I can go into this one Okay, it doesn't really matter which one as long as you give yourself enough length on the red to like not scrunch up your work. Okay, so let me just put my hook in. That actually looks like it's going to be more comfortable going into this one here. So I'm going to put my hook into the, uh, let's go with the second, okay, the second like gap in that cluster and then just grab this, pull it nice and, oops put it on my hook and pull it nice and tight not too tight okay and pull your yarn through to the front and then chain one put your hook back in and then turn it into a single crochet okay and then you just want to chain three one two three okay jump into the next cluster do your single crochet chain three Okay, finish off the heart for this cluster like that with your single crochet then you need to chain three one two three okay and then into this cluster with your single crochet chain in three for the heart one two three okay, single crochet chain three and then single crochet into this cluster here like that one two three finish off this heart for this cluster okay one two three and then just do this for every single cluster well, one two three single crochet one two three so it's basically just a single crochet, a chain three, a single crochet, a chain three, single crochet. Just make sure that you're placing your single crochets in the correct place. They should only ever go into either the first gap in your granny cluster or into the second gap of your granny cluster. They should never ever go between your granny clusters. That's only where the pink yarn's going to go, okay? Because you've already got like the little point of the heart underneath, okay? So I'm going to continue this round and I will, one, two, three, I will meet you back when I get to this bit here and I'm just going to show you how to keep going with it. So I'm going to meet you back when I get to about this point and I'll just show you what to do when you're going over the, um, the working bit of the pink yarn. Right, okay, so I'm kind of up to the bit where I'm going to cross my working heart yarn with my working granny yarn. So always keep your grannies in the front and keep your hearts in the back okay so I'm just gonna hold the granny pink at the front on the right side and then I'm just gonna you know continue with my hearts here so just finishing off this heart there okay, chaining three one two three okay so this is just like on the edge of that cluster so it's not gonna get in the way at all so I'm just gonna do my granny heart into this cluster so one two three okay just into here like that and then one two three keeping the pink yarn at the front okay then I'm just gonna do my next heart into the next cluster which is this one so single crochet chain three that wasn't three there we go into there one two three okay last cluster and a half so 
this one, single crochet, one, two, three, here, okay, one, two, three, okay, and then I'm going to go into this cluster, chain my three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to just slip stitch into the bottom of this here, where I had joined my yarn on, like that. Okay. With this one, because I've joined it, hang on a second, I think I've slip stitched into the wrong place. Okay, you want to go, you need to slip stitch right in at the base of this one. Okay. So right into the base, where is it? I'm just going to have a look in the back. Okay, so right into the base of that one. Okay, like that. If I can get it. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you, what, I'm going to just slip stitch it. There. Like that, okay. And then I'm kind of ready. So this will be covered by pink, but I'm ready to go up to the next cluster. So I'm just going to chain two or three and I'm just going to pull that up nice and long. Oh, put a stitch marker in it if you want to. Okay, and then go back to your pink yarn. So these are starting to get tangled now. So I'm just going to sort myself out. Okay, you can just like literally spin your work and get yourself out of the tangle. Hang on, there we go. Nearly. There. I'm going to put pink over here. Okay, right, untangle. That's just pink from there. Okay, so here's my pink working yarn over here. Here's my red working yarn over here, but it's fine. We can make it work. I'm just going to move my tail into the middle so it doesn't annoy me. So here we left the pink in front and we are just going to continue with a round of granny clusters just into every uh, space in between them. So leave your yarn. So remember, when you go past this point, keep the red yarn at the back. Okay, it's only when you work in red that you keep the pink at the front. Okay, and you can see it's making nice little hearts there in between each one so for this round okay this one I'm gonna do the full so I need to chain three this is like a chain two I think so there's my third one I'm gonna do my full granny cluster into this one like this okay so chain three like that okay so here so just to recap what I'm going to do, so this is a corner, I'll make granny corner, which is a three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, what, granny cluster, granny cluster. So basically, wherever there's a heart, that's where you need to be putting a, like a granny cluster, okay? Except for the corners where you need to look for your chain two, okay? And they'll just be, you know, there'll be a one stitch into there, okay? So you need to do a corner, so you'll do granny cluster, granny cluster, and then there'll be a corner. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'll probably put some nice music on so you can just watch me crack on because you've probably got used to the idea of what we're doing now. So, and I'll just, I'll show you the back side. Okay, so if I just, these are just my tails. So that's a tail, that's a tail. And you can see where we carried the red up. Okay, it doesn't like make that much of a difference. I mean, you can tell this is the back side of the work. And the pink, you can't tell where you carry the pink up because it's just, you're just working it like it's a normal granny cardigan except you're just putting these hearts in between each cluster or onto each cluster okay so like i said the red doesn't increase the size of your actual granny like hexagon or you can do this in a square you just have to make two less corners at the very start so yeah you can't see where the pink travels up but you will be able to see where the red carries up um and that's just going to be your wrong side so i'll pop some nice music on you can watch what i'm doing but in essence, this is like if you've seen my tutorial on how to make um, my Tinkerbell cardigan, which I can link down below, this is like the exact same thing that I'm doing with the pink, like as what I do with the green in the Tinkerbell cardigan. I've just put hearts onto this one. So I'm just going to yarn over, make my corner into here, and I'm just going to continue and I'll put some music on. If you want to skip past this, um, if you want to go to like the next, um, there's timestamps down below. So if you don't want to watch me do this, then, you know, you don't have to. But, I mean, if you are, like, in the middle of your project, if you're doing this at the same time or, you know, whatever, then, you know, just enjoy the the YouTube free music that I've 
chosen to put on here and um, yeah, enjoy the process. Okay, so I'm just on the final granny cluster of this round. So here's my first two double crochets, third, oops, third double crochet into there. Okay, and then I'm just going to join to the top of this chain three with a slip stitch. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Okay. And then that, so when we get onto, it's starting to bunch up now because it wants to turn into a cardigan. I'm just pull up that loop nice and long, okay? So I always have, like, I'll do a chain three, I'll go all the way around and then I'll finish this cluster with my two there. And I, I kind of alternate with this round, with rounds. So if you saw this round, um, this pink round below had started with, like, me doing the full cluster and then going around and then just joining on but the row below I'd like started with just the chain three and then went and then joined my other two double crochet so I'll I alternate like that that's just how I do it I never really start my grannies in the corners that's that's just what I'm comfortable with if you wanted to start your grannies in the corners and you're like you know you're a pretty competent crochet then by all means you could just slip stitch your way over to there because when you're doing these heart stitches you're not doing them into the top stitches of the you know the double crochets you're doing the heart stitches like in between these so into like the gaps between so that's totally fine um you know this is just a guide this is just how i do it i've not written a pattern i mean i'll try <laughs> i can't even read patterns but i will at some point try to get a pattern out for this um, let me know in the comments like if you really really want a written pattern and I will just I will step up my game and I'll try to get on writing patterns that is one of my things for 2024 to like have patterns for whatever I've made I just seem to have more like patterns coming out of my head than I can actually create like for example I've actually started doing um like a basket weave one so I've got a basket weave hexagon on the way I've just like started it so that will be probably like in two videos time because I've got this one I've got an alpine stitch and then I'll have a basket weave so these are all the hexagons that my brain has been making for me to share um, but anyway we need to continue with this so remember pin goes to the front so pull up your loop put in your stitch marker whatever and then when you go past it you'll just keep it at the front so the red is over here for some reason I've got this pink tail mixed in with it I don't know how that's happened let me just pull that out okay so just put your hook back into the, the red or whatever colour you're using for your hearts, okay? I'm just going to make sure that it's got a chain three. This doesn't appear to be a chain three at the minute, so let me just chain two more just so I can carry it up, okay? Um, I'm going to put it into this one. So you can put it into either this one or that one. It's totally up to you, whichever way you want to kind of stretch it. I'm going to put it into the one... Oops, I don't want to hold that yet. I'm going to put it into this one okay so I'm going to go into the first one here it might actually be better if you do do it like to the one on the left of wherever you go on because when I put it in here it just kind of looked a little bit awkward so that you know it's a learning curve for me so you could just like put it into the one on the left and then just make it keep going up that way um, but like I said up to you so put your hook in put your slip knot on pull it through chain one and then go back in and turn that into a single crochet by grabbing it and pulling it through and then chain three and then 
single crochet to finish off the heart for that granny cluster chain three jump over to your next cluster and make a heart so one two three single crochet okay. one two three okay you never ever need to chain corners for these ever it's literally just a single crochet a chain three a single crochet like that and you just want to do that like all the way around okay and then when you get back to the end just slip stitch into there chain two or three depending on your tension and um, you could always chain three and then like take one back off and um, slip stitch right into the bottom of this chain three and then keep it in the back when you work your next like granny cluster row and then obviously when you work in your heart rows keep the granny wool or the granny yarn to the front so hearts in the back grannies in the front and just keep going around and around so i hope that was okay for like the tutorial part um if you have any questions about it then let me know in the comments if you feel like you need a more in-depth if i've not covered something just like ask questions um i probably will do a video where i just do purely like how to make hexagons of things that already exist as granny squares that's something i've been wanting to do for a while now so yeah just to just continue with this um up to your desired size i'm gonna flick over to me discussing sizing so i'm going to use like the actual cardigan itself to discuss the sizing so that's coming up next um and then i will be showing you how to extend what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this bigger um off camera and then i'm going to show you how to extend using this one because i think it's probably going to be way better to teach you with this one than it would be to, despite all my efforts with lighting it's just not going to work with that black one there so um, yeah, let's go and have a look and see how this measures up and I'll, uh, I'll talk about how to get this to fit you or whoever you're making it for. Okay, right, so once your hexagon is like pretty much to the size you want it, um, so I've got like 16, no 17 black rows on this. So technically it's like 34 rows altogether, but the heart rows don't increase the size of it. So it's still like technically if it was a granny one, it's still technically like 17 rows okay so you want to fold it if you don't know how to fold them grab yourself two corners put them together make sure that your inside is on the inside and then your outside is on the outside and it's looking pretty fab i know the lighting's rubbish in here like the light bulb's gone in the room so i'll try and sort that out um but yeah so you want it so that hang on i'm going to get some stitch markers and i'm going to show you how i measure it onto myself okay stitch markers are in there i've just put four of them so what I want, it doesn't matter which side this is at the moment, I've not allocated it a side. So you just want to kind of put it on and get the edge up to your neck. So this one, I need to extend it. So the, um, if you are following the timestamps in here, the next timestamp is going to be how to extend any side. So extending this side, I'm going to, I will always extend my arms before I seam the arms up. I just, I just prefer it when I'm doing stitches like this. Like if I was just doing a basic granny square hexagon cardigan, I'd probably just like join it up and then go in the round, especially if like I was working with an ombre style yarn. But for this one, I'm gonna extend it before I seam it up. So the next timestamp um, is that. So yeah, just like if you're bored of me talking, just, you know, skip, go straight to that. And let's extend this. I will extend both sleeves. Um, I've not decreased the sleeves. I kind of like a balloon sleeve. It's kind of just under here. So once I've got the things on the back of it, my little, I think I'm going to put like four or five, probably five, um, yeah, I'm going to put five different like granny heart squares. So once I've got those on, I'm going to just extend. So the process to extend this is exactly the same, almost, to extend this. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. First of all, let's do the sleeves. Okay, right, so once you've got to your desired length, okay, so always, always finish on a granny cluster round. Never finish on a heart round because, like, the hearts are just the things that have, like, been added in between to, like, you know, make the hearts. So here I've, like, got to the end of the row, I've slip stitched, okay, so I'm just going to chain one, leave myself a little bit of a tail, and just, like, snip my yarn off, and then just pull it through, and then you can weave that end in later. And the same goes for the hearts. So if you have like reached to the end of your hearts, okay, I'm just gonna, I've chained three there, but it doesn't matter, okay? I'm just gonna pull it up, snip it like that, okay? 
and that's fine I can just weave that in okay so yeah this is like not the size that I would do for like you know a cardigan for myself however this size will work fine for demonstrating what you need to do to extend one of the sides okay so let me just um I'll do it on, on this side here so if you were to fold it so if you grab two corners fold it it's like it's working perfectly fine but if I just zoom you out a little bit so it's working perfectly fine as like a half of a cardigan yeah it's gone up that way a little bit but you know it, it's fine you know once you get it into like you know stitched up and all finished and stuff it's going to be totally fine so don't worry if it's like at more than a 90 degree angle okay so I'm going to grab my yarns back again so uh, this side's got no thread so it'll be easier to show you so this would work if you were doing it this size for like i don't know kids doll it'll work if you're doing it like like normal human size or whatever okay it's the same principle for extending so what you're going to do is this was our granny row so we're going to need to put some hearts on it so the first thing that you're going to want to attach when you're extending is your heart color okay and because hearts go in between the granny uh, like inside the granny clusters you're just going to make a slip knot and put it on your hook. So let me just do that quickly. Okay, so slip knot on your hook and then you can either like put it on and pull it through but I'm just going to put it in like this. Put it onto my hook like that. It's got such a halo on this I can't get it through. There we go. Okay, so pull the, the yarn, the slip knot on there quite tight. Bring it through, chain one. Okay, and then I'm going to go back into it and I'm going to turn it into a single crochet okay so that's all steady on there and then chain three one two three okay and then just do your hearts across okay so there's your single crochet there one two three into the next one like so chain three to make a little heart Oops, there we go. like that chain three and just do it across oops that's you know what's happened here just do it across until you get to the last granny cluster i don't know what's going on with this yarn today it's splitting loads and then let me just get it back in there okay three like so wound this up really tight so one two three into this cluster and then one two three there we go one two three one two three I keep bashing the camera apologies one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Let's just go into the end of this one. Okay, like that. And then what you're going to want to do is just chain two. So one, two. And then because you're going to be extending up, you're going to find not the first chain there, but like the second one here. So just go into that there. And then just do a slip stitch like that okay and then chain two one two pull up a hook uh, pull up a hook pull up a loop and just leave it to the side okay and then what we're gonna do now is we are gonna cast on not cast on I've been trying to knit what we're gonna do now is we are gonna put on the pink yarn okay so the pink yarn is going to start in a different place it's going to start here okay because we need to do like a chain three here so just into this one of the chain spaces from the corner below just pop your hook in well actually make a slip knot and then pop your hook in okay so slip knot made like that so slip knot pop your hook in okay and then going to want to pull it through if I can get it through like so chain three one two three okay you can't really crochet over the tail because you already have the hearts so just leave it there to weave in leave a decent tail 
to get woven in like that okay and then since we chain three we are gonna do a so yarn over and do a granny cluster into here so one two three okay so that was like the next one oops that wasn't a double crochet like that okay I think I've picked up the wrong size of the side I've picked up the wrong side of the yarn I'm gonna have this pink ball of yarn spinning around now never mind uh, so then yarn over go on to the next one and just do as if you were just working like a normal uh, granny hexagon cardigan just gonna do your main color or your main yarn along like so oops that was not a I don't know what's wrong with me today. I think it's because my nails are a little bit longer than I usually have them. Like that. Let me just move this red out of the way. Okay, so one, double, two, double, three doubles. Okay, into the next space. Granny cluster. One, two, three okay and then into this one and let me just make sure this doesn't go back through okay so into this one i'm actually going to put um like a granny cluster in here okay so i know that it's the same kind of setup for these but i don't want to extend it i don't want this getting bigger okay so i've just got this in the corner there but i am actually going to put um two double crochet well, I'm going to put three double crochet, but the third one I'm going to put into the actual um, chain. So, three, two, just keep that red there. Don't, don't like go over it at the minute. Okay. So there's two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over and put this pink into the same place where I'd slip stitch the red. Okay. Keep the red to that side keep the red on the right hand side okay and then just bring that through pull through two pull through two like that okay and then you're going to want to chain three pull up a long loop or whack in a stitch marker okay and then turn your work so essentially you do like two of them that way and then you'll do two of them this way then two that way and two this way just until you get it to the length that you want okay so now we're going to do a red roll. So we'll just keep the pink, keep the pink out of the way, keep the pink over there. Well, you know, you might not be using pink, but you know what I mean. So keep that over there and then pop your hook in. And then on this granny cluster that we've just finished, you're going to want to put your hook in there like that. Okay, and then just hook in with the yarn on, it's a bit fiddly. Grab a hold of this, like that, and then single crochet. Okay, apologies if I'm bashing the camera, it's just so fiddly. And then you want to chain three, one, two, three. I'm just going to move the pink over here out of the way. Okay, and then into the second part of that cluster, we're going to make our single crochet, like that, and then chain three, one, two three okay and then just do the same thing all the way along for your heart so single crochet one two three single crochet one two three okay and just do this all the way along here and I'll meet you back when you get to there Right, so I've just made my last single crochet into the last one there. You're going to chain two, one, two, okay, and then into here. So you see, this was like an original like chain three before we started. Just into like the second or the third chain, depending on how your tension was. Just slip stitch into it. So slip stitch into the place where you would want to put your pink yarn. Okay, so like that and like that, slip stitched. Okay. And then you want to chain two, one, two, okay, pull up a nice long loop and then leave that to that side, okay, 
and now put your hook back into your pink okay so what will happen is that it will travel up here okay so the yeah like the red and the pink will travel up okay but when you're actually like like seaming things together so like if this was like the top of the arm you would be like you know you'd turn it inside out and you'd slip stitch or you'd you know however you like to do your arm joins you know this would all all the bulk would end up on the inside so that's totally fine and then anything down this side you know it's going to be hidden because look it's it's like this and it would all be hidden because it would be seamed so don't worry if it, you feel like it's looking a bit bulky here it's going to be totally fine okay so what I'm going to do here because this was a cluster I'm going to yarn over and I'm just going to go straight into here like that okay so we're going to do a cluster into this hole so I'm just like grabbing things with these ridiculously long nails, which were probably a bad idea to use for this tutorial. So there's two double crochet. There's three. Okay, and you're just going to do your normal granny clusters all the way along into the, the gaps between the clusters and the row below. Just like that. And this wool is spinning around because I'm silly and I didn't pull it from the centre. Okay, so I'll meet you when we get to the end, whoops, the end of this row. Okay, so reaching the end, so this is just the tails where I joined on, so just ignore those. That's the loop for my work in red. Okay, so I'm going to put my, because this needs a cluster in here, because this was just a chain. So you want to put a granny cluster into here. So one double crochet, two double crochet, and then yarn over and then where the red is slip stitched into yarn over put your hook in keep your red on the inside like that keep your red to this side pull it through go through two go through two like that okay and then when you've done this one you the next thing that you'll work into is this gap with the pink so chain three okay pull up a loop pull your loop up like this okay turn your work okay so we're now ready to work back across this way what's that There's loads of lint everywhere okay so hook into the red and it, it's pretty much just the same thing just like remembering where you're putting what okay so here we're already inside the cluster like the like inside the cluster there so we're in between the two stitches we need to be so just put the hook up there Pull that through, keep your pink over to that side and pull it through for your single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, okay, hook in, single crochet, okay, chain three and then just work your way across as you would normally do. And that, so chain three, one, two, three. And that's all you're going to do so you're just going to work up so this i know it looks bulky but it will even itself out because we did you know that was one side there okay so it does even itself out on this one side we started with the cluster and then on this side we had no cluster so it does technically even itself out that just looks bulky by the way i've done it okay so it will be like that and then you know this can either be like when you're extending the bottom um, basically any side that you extend these bits they're either going to end up like as the insides of the sleeves like that if they were like this or they're going to end up as like the inside of your cardigan like or the back side so they would either get seamed like onto the inside or it's going to have like a ribbing or something so whatever you're carrying up so if I just move these out of the way like that so whatever you're carrying up I mean I like to put like a layer of single crochet around the whole garment before I'm going to put my ribbon on or perhaps I'd put like a row of single crochet down before I was to add on like if I'm putting something in the middle or if this is if you're purely going to crochet like the two sides of your cardigan together so if you have two of these um, when you do it like it's probably a good idea to have like well it's going to be the granny cluster row that you do anyway so it, I think it'll be it'll be fine. 
whatever I'm doing with mine, um, with this pink one, I'm obviously going to try and teach you as much as I can on this anyway, but with my actual cardigan, like, I have put a panel up the back, I've put a panel of Granny Square Hearts, okay, you can see how this length, if I just zoom us out a bit, yeah, you can see how that got longer, um, if you don't want to put, like, if you feel like that looks bulky, by all means, just, like, chain, like we did here, and then just do chains, but, like, I'm, this is my sample piece anyway, so, it's fine. If I wanted to, I could frog that and just start it off with a chain. But, I mean, you know, it's up to you. You have creative freedom with this. These kind of look like little strawberries. Um, so, yeah, that's how you extend any side. If you have any questions about extending any side, like, pop them down below. I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, but, yeah, so this works with extending the length. This works with extending the back. And this also works with extending the sleeves. So, with my hexagon cardigans... I tend to extend the sleeves before I will seam the sleeves up. Um, I just, I just feel like it, it you know, it's better uh, for me, depending on my designs. And besides, because you've got all these little hearts, trying to do these in the round it might get a bit faffy. I mean, by all means, try it if you want to, but that's what I've decided to do with mine. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna now crack on with my uh, original one here. So I'm gonna put these. Um, I'm going to attach everything with this now. I'm going to attach this to the the centre granny squares that I've done. And let, let's get it on because I, I want to finish this ASAP. I'm going turkey next week and I want to have something to wear. Okay, right. So it's been a couple of hours, a couple of days. Um, and I have done the extensions on the sleeves of my cardigan. So that, uh, is that the right one? Hang on, I do have them both. Yeah, this is. I'll show you this in a second. So here it is. I did. I put the stitch marker in the end of this one. So for my arms, um, I extended it by like a further nine black rows, and I've not put a cuff on just yet. So for me, like that is like that's totally fine because I'm going to put a cuff on, and then it'll be it'll be the right length. And then, so hang on, this is just dangling off me. So they're both extended. They're both ready. So, I have not done a tutorial for this. Well, I did. I filmed a tutorial on making these granny squares. And then, after I'd made it, and then I'd filmed it, and I was like, right, I can edit this now. I can go and put it, like, on YouTube, and then people can follow it. And then I realised about three or four other YouTubers literally have granny square tutorials like this. So, if you want to do um, this kind of thing, I'll, I'll talk about it more in a second. But if you want to do this kind of panel for the back of yours and you would like me to tutorial this, I have plans to make a scarf with this. So if you would like me to like show you like how to do like, well it basically if you want me to upload the tutorial I made, because mine are quite rectangly, mine are, I think it's two stitches wider than they are long, so they're like rectangles technically. So all I did was I just made them. I actually have another jumper that I'm in the middle of making and I've got a huge panel of them. So these are my spares. Um, but yeah, so I just literally went one, two, three, four, five, and then all I did, I just stitched them. If you want to know how I stitch panels together, or how I stitch granny squares, or whatever squares together, my Barbie video will be linked below, and I literally show you exactly how I stitch squares together. I also made this jacket, it's not here, hang on, oh, it's over here. So if you've seen my tutorial for this jacket with the sleeves, I literally only have about 11 videos on my channel at this point. So I show you how to stitch squares together on that video as well. Like, I don't want this video to be too long, so, you know, it is what it is. But yes, if you want to make these and you want to watch my tutorial, let me know in the comments and I will upload it. If you're not bothered about making exactly this, or uh, even if you want me to make the scarf tutorial, because I would make a pretty scarf, like, that would be nice, yeah. Okay, that could be snood. Anyway, so it is my panel. So yeah, all I did was I just went around the outside with like granny stitches just to help it match up to these. Okay, so I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to put it on my bed because that's the easiest place to lay it out. Um, I will need to extend this on the bottom just to get it to match up. So taking notes from the Tinkerbell cardigan video I made, I think I might start stitching this on to here first. And then as it like gets stitched to the bottom side here, then I've got like this much to extend. I'll just extend and join as I go, which is what I did on my Tinkerbell video as well. So I think the, mo the majority of you guys should be here just to figure out how you do 
this pattern and then piece it together. Um, if you wanted it more in depth, apologies, but like I'm trying to rush and get this out. So like if you know how to do this, fabulous. If you are brand new to crochet, then I'm probably like not the best person <laughs> to learn from because I myself am still learning. I've basically been doing this for like two years, less than two years. Um, and I just wing everything. Um, so yeah, let's go and stitch this up to this middle panel, which is the piece for the back, if I hadn't kind of made that clear already. Um, and then because we need to extend this even more, but we don't know by how much we need to extend it. See, hang on. I don't even really need to lay it out. It's kind of like that. And then I just need to extend it like, it might be a, maybe it could be like another nine rows. Hang on a second. Let me just give an idea. This is how much I've extended my sleeves by. Does it match up to that? Oh, probably does. Yeah. Okay. Right. It might be like another nine black rows, which is basically nine black and red rows together because the red rows do not contribute to the length. But I'm liking how it's going to look. I think I might call it the Queen of Hearts or the, the Valentine hexagon cardigan or I don't know, the heart stitch card. What I haven't even decided yet. I just I just want to get it done. I want to get it done and I want it to be Wednesday. Actually, no, I want it to be Tuesday next week because on Tuesday next week I'm flying to Turkey. So, yes. And I will take you with me. I will be vlogging, etc. So, right, let me just go and stitch these together. So I'm going to check back in with you with an update. Once I've done that, I'm just getting distracted because I bought this for another project and it just looks... Oh, that, that's not picking up the pink on the camera. Just anyway, anyway, I'm getting distracted. ADHD overload. So let's go and do this and then I will show you. Okay, excuse the bedspread. It's like the, the bedspread of an old lady, but never mind. I'm in my, my granny era with my crochet. So, right, this is... Hello. Key. So this is how it looks when it's laid out like this with a, a cat in the way. Ends will be sewn in, Dory. Um, so I don't think I need to extend it by loads, so I might try, hang on, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, right, let's try five rows on each one, and then I'm going to join it up and see what that looks like, but I'm like, I'm really liking how that looks. Aren't you just a ball of cuteness? Oh, you're so cute. Ow! Oh, that's it. Right, let's start stitching. Don't you dare click that. Can I have this? <gasps> right, that you are going on eBay. Get off this. Get off this. You are lucky I have to weave this in. Right, okay, I ended up doing six more rows. So that's like like a red and purple. Uh, red and purple. So a red and black, red and black, red and black, red and black. So like six black and six red, which is technically 12, but like, you know, the red ones don't make it like increase. So it's like six rows of each and then um, that pretty much did it so then I just stitched it like my normal like weaving in and out stitch and um, so I'm gonna do this side now oh, sorry for the bad light I'm just like in my room so I'm gonna extend that side just by six and then I'm just gonna like do my normal stitching to join it on there and then after that it will be time for cuffs and ribbing so let's get this bit done okay right so both sides are now joined onto here um, I ended up extending by like six black rows on each side. Um, I had just done this one by five, so I corrected myself and I went back and I made it like six. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six on both sides. Okay, so now I need to seam up the arms. So I'm gonna flip it like so that the wrong side is facing outwards and I'm literally just gonna single crochet. So I'm gonna take this back to the craft room and do that now. So currently, like, I've got both of these sides attached onto the back panel. Um, I'm not doing, I'm not, obviously I'm not connecting them so that there's no back panel. I mean, if you were going to connect them like that, you would probably just want to, like, do the join that I'm doing for the, you know, the sleeves now. So that it kind of looked a bit like that. But, like, I want this because this is my Queen of Hearts cardigan. So what you need to do is make sure that you are working on the outside, no, sorry, the inside sticking out. So let me flip this. So I've got my stitch markers in, so I'm just flipping it round. Okay, so this is my wrong side flipping out. I have literally not sewn in a single end apart from, actually no, not even a single end. Maybe one or two, but yeah. So I've still got my stitch markers in on my sleeve because I was trying it on. But yeah, so I'm literally just going to start with. Let me just. I'm going to leave the stitch markers in while I do this. So I'm just going to grab the very ends of this. Okay, so like this is an end. And this is an end here, so that's like the the very ends. You can't really see because it's black yarn. I'm so sorry, but like I wanted this to be in black and red. Okay, so like right here at the very top, like ends of this. So I'm just gonna. 
pull this through, this yarn, and I'm just going to tie it like this. So remember, I already made the sleeves the correct length to be able to add a cuff on after I've done this. So pull this on and then I'm going to double knot mine. Okay, right, since I crochet from late, uh, right to left, I'm going to just put it, I'm going to just, half of it just fell on the floor. This is where it gets faffy. Okay, so I'm just going to put my hook in where I had um, tied those on. There's just so many ends hanging around here. I'm just going to put those to the side. Okay, this is my working yarn. So I'm just going to pull it and chain one. Okay, I'm like trying to have all the lights on this. Okay, I'm going to crochet over these ends here. So I'm going to like single crochet over them. So because this is like a chain space, I'm going to go back into it and do a single crochet like that. Okay, and then these, this is like these sides of the, I don't know if you can see, can I like make it focus more? Not really, I'm trying. Um, because these are like the sides of the granny stitches from when we, because we extended it that way, okay? So these are the sides of the granny stitches. So into the side stitch of each granny like cluster, I'm just gonna put my hook in on the corresponding one on the other side as well. And I'm just gonna single crochet in that one. I'm gonna do it twice because like, obviously it's a double crochet so it's pretty long. So I'm gonna put it in right there. Okay, and then that's a single. So I'm just let me just take this off camera and make sure I've done that right. Uh, have I done that right? Yes, I think I have. So the next thing I wanna do is go into the next corresponding ones. So there's that one, oops, hang on, there. Those ones there, because you want them to be lined up because you don't want your sleeves to be skew if. So I'm just doing two single crochets, basically into like the end of each row from this, just until I actually hit like the regular single, um, the regular crochet loops that are up here. So just for these extension bits, just stick in two single crochets right at the end of each row, and that'll be like into a double crochet's side. So there's one for that row. And put it back in, do another one for that row. Okay, so there's corresponding ones there. Put this in, do two of those. Okay. And then this one with two single crochets. This one. Sorry, I keep bashing the camera. It's so awkward to try and do this because this cardigan's so big now. Nearly finished the extension rows. So this one, that one, one, two, these two, one, two, uh, and then I think, aha, uh -huh, right, so this, because there's ends here, this is where I've started the extension rows, okay, I'm just going to keep those here. So this is the chain space of the original hexagon, right, this is the corner of the original hexagon, um, and this is obviously, it's along the top, yeah, so this is like the, with what's going to be touching your shoulder. So into this chain space, I'm just going to put one in there, like so, and now I can match up each single crochet from this um from each granny cluster so single crochet so into the middle of that first granny cluster and into the middle of the corresponding one on the other side i can do single crochet into the third stitch on that first granny cluster and do single crochet oops my hook just came out there we go and then literally just into the matching up stitches, just go all the way along like that. Apologies, I know it's black yarn, it's horrendous to try and do a tutorial with, but um, I'm pretty sure that I've got this on my other videos as well. So if you've checked out my other um, hexagon cardigan tutorials, you know, you might be watching this in a year's time. In that case, I'll have like alpine stitch ones up, I'll have basket weave stitch ones up. 
um, I'll have all sorts of cardigans up so yeah just like for now because I'm a fairly new youtuber I don't have like a whole like army of videos to refer you to but um, I mean I've talked you through it I've I've explained what I'm doing so hopefully that was good enough and then when you flip it and turn it around ignore these tails these tails are gonna get sorted out but it should look good so I'm gonna do that for both sides and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like before I put the cuffs on okay I've just hung this up on the door I have just finished doing the ribbing around I've not yet done the ribbing around here I've got ends hanging out everywhere ignore this mess okay I've just got back from Turkey ignore the mess that's just that I need to do this haul okay so ignore that um so I did one layer I don't know if you can see see this is why like black yarn is hard to like work with if I hold it here I did one um all the way around I did single crochet just all the way around when it gets to the bits up here um, as long as you put like a single crochet into the correct place um, around the neck then it's fine like hang on. so there you see where it joined I literally just put like a single crochet around like into each like hole that seemed like the proper hole to crochet into um, so there was one single crochet all the way around and then there was one um, so then the second round of this was a, a double crochet into every single crochet all the way around and then um, you've probably seen on loads of my other um, tutorials that like for example on my my neon yellow tutorial and on my other ones that I just do front loop back loop for my ribbon and this I'm trying to get the light to hit it in the correct way so I literally just do one row I'll do front loop back loop and then I just keep going with it and um, if you do want to see more in depth of like me doing front loop back loop then seriously just go and check out the waffle stitch hexagon cardigan or depending on if you're watching this in the future because I mean this tutorial is not really in depth on how to put this all together um, purely because it's it was mostly just for you to learn how to do this stitch and then you know it, it just pieces together like a normal hexagon cardigan would because this red doesn't interfere with how you piece it all together um, but then you know depending on how far in the future you're watching this you might already have seen my basket weave tutorial you might already have seen my alpine stitch tutorial you might have seen i might have i don't even know what i'm going to make after those but yeah so check tutorials like that out from my channel because they will be the more in-depth tutorials this one was more just to like show you the design how like how you kind of like vaguely put it together but it was more to show you this stitch on here because this is basically just a hexagon cardigan it just happens to like be put together exactly the same way as like for example my tinkerbell or my barbie one um, but yeah that's where we're up to so now the sun's kind of disappeared so I'm not getting much light so what I'm going to do now is these were extended using the extended method that I showed you with the pink and red yarn and I'm now gonna um, I'm not going to weave this in just yet I might use it um, but I'm now just going to do my slip and stitch so if you have seen the tutorial for this garment here so if you, this tutorial <laughs> somebody on the Turkish yarn waiting for me to do the haul um, I'm just going to do the exact same sl like sleeve that I'm um, sorry the exact same cuff that I do for this one here so go and check out this tutorial if you want the in-depth I've literally got yarn everywhere and my apologies it is messy so check out this tutorial on like how to put sleeves on a denim jacket and that will show you the exact method on how to do this this video let me know down below if you have like any questions or any comments that you want to make I really like to have the feedback if my tutorials are helpful and um, this cardigan is like I said it's pieced together like a regular hexagon cardigan it, you've just like added hearts into it so there are like literally I feel like YouTube's kind of saturated with granny stitch 
cardigans at the minute but I tried to make kind of a different one um, so it pieces together like pretty much any other hexagon cardigan would it's just a little bit more intermediate with like the heart stitches on there so anyway um if you did like this video please consider liking sharing subscribing and um, everything makes a huge difference to my channel I'm trying to grow it I'm trying to take you around the world to buy yarn my Istanbul haul and like my whole like vlog will be up on the channel I'm literally editing it now and um, it's kind of in the final stages of editing but I bought so much yarn that I'm having to like do the yarn haul in like little sections because um, there was three main places that we found yarn in Istanbul and yeah I just I spent all my birthday money it was fabulous um so yeah and everything I did buy like 80% of it I have plans of what to make so the next um tutorials that you'll see coming from me will be I have figured out how to turn a basket weave into a hexagon that is one of the ones that's coming next. I also found out how to turn alpine stitch into a hexagon and I made this little tiny cardigan, it's so cute. Um, so if you want to see those two tutorials, please consider subscribing. Um, I don't even know what I could put this on, Sneaky's too big for this. Um, I could frame this and I could like put it up on my wall, that'd be quite good. Uh, anyway, I'm getting carried away. So yes, those are two tutorials that will be coming up for hexagon cardigans. I also will be making a pizza blanket because I made my brother one a while ago for his birthday like literally was it last year or the year before um but I bought loads of this in Turkey which was like, like a pound each basically a pound each for these um I'm gonna make a pizza blanket because I just want one for my house um and I'm gonna make like loads of stuff I've got like Aldi hauls and stuff I really need to get back on uploading videos after this injury um but yeah so there's loads to come so like subscribe if you like my content yeah um feel free to subscribe it is really really appreciated and I guess I'm gonna see you guys in the next one